Hey everyone, welcome to the Airstream Chronicles. You're here with Rich. Haven't done a video in a while, but I've got a good reason to do a video today. We've done something with the Airstream that I've wanted to do for 12 years. And that one thing that I wanted to do was add solar to the Airstream. So I've traveled all over the country, I've boondocked in some pretty amazing places, and I've never had solar on the Airstream in that entire 12 year period. Uh, that might sound a little crazy to some RVers who are out full time, and for other RVers, you probably haven't considered solar at all. Well, recently, I had the opportunity to work with Marvin Braun of Precision RV. And Marvin is a very well-known solar installer throughout the RV industry, and he's also very well-known among RVers and among Airstreamers. So, fortunately for me, Marvin needed a new website. His old website uh, had been hacked, and I'd been needing a new solar system for quite some time. So a mutual friend put the two of us together, and a few weeks ago, I finally got to go down and work with Marvin while he was putting in solar systems for several other RVers and for the Airstream. So let's talk about what I did with the Airstream. I didn't do the new big system that everyone's doing. I went with, I'll call it a simpler solution, but it's still not simple. We put 600 watts of solar power up on the top of the Airstream, so we fit six uh, panels up there. And each panel generates about five amps. Uh, if I'm getting this wrong, Marvin will correct me, I'm sure. Anyways, we put those six new panels up. We swapped out our old flooded lead acid batteries in favor of acid glass mats. And we popped a blue sky battery controller in. So what's the end result? Our power plant is a 300 amp hour power plant. And with the uh, lead acids and the gl acid glass mats, when you say a 300 amp hour installation, what you have usable is about 50%. So really we have 150 true amp hours available to us in the battery plant. We've got 30 amps being produced on, on the top of the Airstream um, when it's high sun. And so the big question is, well, how much power do you use? I mean, you could put as many uh, panels as you want up onto an RV. And uh, the big question is, what are you actually using? In our case, we don't lose too much when we go boondocking. We're recharging laptops, we're running our fans, um, we're recharging um, uh, camera batteries, like the camera sitting there right now. We're recharging our iPhones. By the way, the iPhone's out. That's what my microphone is working off of today. Hopefully the wind noise won't be too bad for you. So after evaluating my own needs for what I'd like to do with the Airstream and our boondocking needs, um, Marvin and I discussed it, and we came up with a system that works well for us. Now, I've been living with the solar system for a week now, and the Airstream is currently unhooked from shore power still. Uh, even over the weekend, we had horribly gray skies, cold rain, a little bit of sleet here and there. Uh, the Whiskey Row off-road was this weekend, uh, the mountain bike race, so of course the weather had to be horrible for the poor mountain bikers. Uh, putting that aside, while we had these terrible gray skies and some pretty heavy rainstorms, uh, the solar panels were still producing for us. As a matter of fact, every day we usually got, uh, we were down to about 90% uh, battery capacity. One day we were at 87% um, in the morning when I first got up. And usually by 9 or 10 a.m. right now, uh, the battery plant is completely charged and I can still run my laptop and my external monitor, a 21-inch screen, and um, battery plant still at 100% uh, for the entire day so long as the sun is up. So the, uh, the big part of the battery plant for us is, you know, overnight power. If we're going to watch some movies or do some additional work on the computers or uh, need to recharge the phones or other devices, uh, 150 amp hours available to us uh, is plenty. So, you might be asking yourself, Rich, why didn't you do these new lithium ion setups and what's the whole deal with those? You know, if I had known more about the lithium ion battery plants and known more about the hybrid inverters that are available today, I might have thought, have thought about it. We also have to remember we're on a budget. We're all on a budget. 
and uh, some folks budgets are higher some folks budgets are lower if we had done a lithium-ion installation the battery plant would have cost a lot more and I probably would have made it a little larger and um, we would have had to add an additional controller um, and the batteries would also have to be inside because there are some temperature management uh, issues uh, given that we've got two people living in the Airstream full-time it's a 25 foot Airstream uh, we are slim on storage space so one of the uh, one of my thoughts was I really didn't want to give up much storage space now with the lithium-ion battery plants if you build them large enough um, they offer more capacity uh, a longer lifespan and they're lower weight than the acid glass mats so that all sounds great and yes I'd like to see that in the Airstream at some point for sure uh, one of the other benefits with a really good inverter or even a hybrid inverter um, you can run your air conditioner you can run your microwave and those are awesome conveniences but in 10 years of boondocking uh, I really haven't needed the microwave and we haven't had to deal with uh, the air conditioner because bottom line when I'm out boondocking I'm actually out usually having a fun time so when we're cooking at night I use the grill I don't like cooking in the Airstream when it's hot out uh, it just makes the air conditioner work harder and you know it's much easier to uh, to grill outside and that's that's part of the fun of RVing right um, so the microwave isn't really necessary and usually the air conditioner isn't necessary and if it starts getting really hot uh, there's a really cool thing about my Airstream I can hook it up and move it somewhere else so if the temperatures are miserable at Lake Havasu how about taking a ride up to Cortez Colorado how about going over to Flagstaff where the temperatures are always cooler so rather than staying in somewhere that's too hot uh, the Airstream, being a mobile home, is mobile. So for the time being, I opted not to do the, uh, the full Monty on the solar system. I can tell you, after working with Marvin uh, of Precision RV for a couple of weeks, I really would love to have the lithium batteries and a Magnum hybrid inverter. It would be awesome. Um, it's it it's the technological G whiz of I can be completely off grid, independent of any power supply, and run everything in my airstream. The way I look at it right now with my airstream, I can run most everything that I really need um, when we're out boondocking. And if at some point I do need to run the air conditioner, I do have a quiet generator in the back of my truck that rarely gets used but that is an option now as we live with this solar system over time I can promise you that I'll be sitting back saying boy I want to do those lithiums at some point so Marvin's going to be expecting a call for me in the next few years to um, finish what we started basically we're three quarters of the way there so down the road we can swap out those acid glass mats for the lithium ion batteries and we can pop that uh, hybrid inverter in there and who knows maybe we'll even have a bigger airstream by then but so hope you like the explanation of uh, what we did with the airstream and like i said the solar system that we've got set up today uh, really does meet all of our needs i've been living on solar now for seven days um, it's doing fantastic we have yet to run the batteries below 87 percent and during daylight hours right now it's uh, not even 11 o'clock the battery plant is completely charged and I've got several computers and a giant monitor running so it's doing everything I needed to do and I can't believe that I went for 12 years owning my Airstream without having put a solar system in oh and one final note I've had several comments on previous videos so I just want to let folks know Yes, I'm out here with the sunglasses. You can't see my eyes. Sorry about that. I had several comments about that on previous videos. But this is Arizona. This is a hyper blue sky right now. Great place for solar. I've got the sun right up here. I positioned myself this way so that my face is at least lit and not in shadow. The photographer's mind is always uh, turning there. And um, so the sunglasses are necessary because otherwise I would squint harder than Clint Eastwood in a movie where he's staring somebody down.
All right, thanks for stopping by, checking out the Airstream Chronicles. And a big thanks to uh, Marvin Braun of Precision RV. He did an awesome job on my Airstream. I was extremely comfortable with the work he did uh, for us. And I am thrilled to pieces with what he has put into our Airstream. It is going to be a major game changer this year for how we're working and operating. And you're going to see more of that on the Airstream Chronicles in the months to come. Not giving away any secrets today. All right. Thanks for tuning in.